I want to explain the big ideas of Bitcoin and I want to do it without using any of the jargon that's, that's often sort of layered on top and makes it really difficult to understand the ideas. Okay, so I'll try to explain what Bitcoin is in a way that does not require a background in computer science, I hope. So at its heart, Bitcoin is a form of money. Uh, well, it's an algorithm. It's an algorithm that simulates money. And it does it in such a way that the money is decentralized, meaning that there is no central authority or central entity that uh, we need to trust in order to use the money. And this also makes it resilient, meaning that uh, no group, no government, can disrupt or control the transactions that occur on Bitcoin. That's what Bitcoin accomplishes. And it does this uh, by using a, a bunch of really big ideas. And these ideas were not all original to Bitcoin, but uh, using them in this combination, that does seem to be uh, uh, original to Bitcoin. So what are the big ideas of Bitcoin? There are three main big ideas as I see them. The first is uh, that to have a form of money, it is enough to be able to maintain a record of all transactions as common knowledge. If we all know what all the transactions were, then uh, we have a meaningful form of money. That's the first big idea. The second big idea is you can pick random leaders in the system to maintain this common knowledge of transactions. And uh, the third idea is to use a computationally intensive task to actually pick uh, who will be the next leader. And, and now I will discuss all of these ideas uh, in turn and explain how they can be put together to make Bitcoin. So let's start with the first idea. Uh, let's, let's imagine that there were only three people in the world and these three people were all in the same room. Okay. Then uh, it would be very easy to have a form of money without actually having any physical tokens or doing any accounting uh, without, without trusting any central authority because all we would do is, uh, you know, initially we'd have those three people would have some amount of money and every time there's a transaction, the person that's sending the money would just announce to everyone else that they are sending the money. Okay. And if everybody knows uh, what the initial money was and how much money was sent around and in what order, order then uh, at all times we all know how much money everybody has. Uh, we have a meaningful system of money. The problem with this idea is that it doesn't easily scale up. Now, uh, if you have millions of people that are not in the room, but are scattered around in the world, then it's hard to implement this idea as is. Today, we do have the internet. The internet allows a single person to send a message to millions of others. So we do have that ability uh, using the internet. Uh, one major challenge is how do we prevent fraud? How do we prevent people from inventing fake transactions? That's one major challenge. A second major challenge is how do we achieve common knowledge given that uh, people, uh, when there are millions of people, people will not hear about the transactions that are arriving at the same time. Okay, so at, a, at different points of time, uh, different people will have uh, knowledge about different sets of transactions. And that, that makes it very difficult to have common knowledge of some set of transactions. So those are the challenges. All right, so let's start with the fraud problem. Uh, a really useful tool to prevent fraud is the concept of a digital signature, uh, which has been around in cryptography for a long time. And this is a, a cryptographic scheme that allows uh, someone to sign messages in such a way that, uh, for example, if this transaction is signed by the sender, 
only the sender can generate the signature. That's the first property. And the second property is that everybody who sees the signature can be confident that the sender actually did sign this transaction. Okay. They can verify that the signature was generated by the sender. So this is a really important cryptographic primitive and it's very useful here because if we require that all transactions are signed by the sender, then we can be confident that there's no fraud, there are no fake transactions. The second problem is that if people are announcing transactions all over the world, then uh, different people will hear about those transactions at different times. So for example, at some point, if this blue person here announces a transaction, and this, this other person announces a transaction, then the set of people that hear about those transactions will not be the same. And it's unclear how we should maintain the common knowledge of all transactions. You know, which, which transactions should be added to that common knowledge, and who knows about it. Bitcoin solves this problem by using random leaders to maintain the common knowledge. So at any particular point in time, there will be uh, a random leader, a randomly chosen leader. And this leader will have the sole ability to add to the common knowledge. So we have some common knowledge that's been maintained up to this point. The leader now has the authority to add a transaction to this common knowledge. And the leader will take a transaction that they have heard about and add that to the common knowledge. So they will themselves sign the transaction, uh, the message that, that, uh, that, that has information about the transaction, and sign it and add it to the common knowledge. So once they generate this signed uh, addition to the common knowledge, they'll just distribute this to everybody that they know. And uh, everyone else will see that the leader has picked the next uh, transaction to be added to the common knowledge and they will help spread it around to everyone else okay until everyone hears about this uh, next transaction and once that happens we'll again pick a new leader who will decide on the next transaction that goes on to the common knowledge so in this way um, there's sort of a consensus about what is common knowledge and what are the transactions that are part of the common knowledge and hopefully, uh, if somebody wants to put a transaction onto the common knowledge, then eventually their transaction will be picked by a leader. Having random leaders also has the property that um, you can't have any single entity controlling the transactions. It's not possible for anyone to generate fake transitions anyway, but uh, potentially it is possible for some entity to prevent a transaction from showing up in the common knowledge if they keep uh, being chosen as a random leader. But because we're choosing the leader at random, uh, even if there's a small group of people that are trying to disrupt the entire system, eventually we will pick an honest leader, one who is trying to participate in the, in the Bitcoin protocol correctly, and that leader will uh, add some, uh, add the transactions that they, they hear about to the common knowledge. The the final big idea that that uh, is used in Bitcoin is that we can use computationally intensive tasks to actually pick who will be the next random leader. Now to explain what's going on here, I want to use an analogy, which uh, I think is pretty accurate. Uh, it's kind of like uh, we're going to have a huge mess of tea leaves that's in the middle of the network that everyone knows about. And to pick the next leader, we will try to find someone's name, the name of the next leader in the tea leaves. And everyone wants to be the next leader. So each person in the, in the network wants to be the next leader because uh, the protocol is set up in such a way that the leader will be paid a small amount of Bitcoin uh, for their services, for the service of being the leader and picking the next transaction. So, 
So everybody is looking for their own name in the tea leaves. And when someone finds their name, say this, this green person here has found their name somewhere in the tea leaves, they simply announce that they have found their name in the tea leaves and, and here it is, the announce the location. And uh, everyone that hears about that uh, decides that this person will be the next leader and, and transmits the location uh, of the name in the tea leaves to everyone else. So everyone can confirm, everyone in the network, network eventually agrees that this person will be the next leader. Okay, so the first person to find their name in the tea leaves is the one that's chosen as the leader. The, the protocol is set up in such a way that the chance of finding your own name and uh, being chosen as a leader is proportional to the amount of computational power that uh, you spend to, to, f to, to accomplish this task, to find your own name. And this means that if um, an entity wants to take over leadership, control leadership, they will have to spend uh, computational power that's comparable to the amount of computational power that's being spent by everybody else in the Bitcoin network. And, and that's what makes it very hard for any, uh, even a very powerful entity like a government to control what's going on in the network. All right, uh, so once uh, this leader has been picked and everybody knows about the leader, the leader uh, signs off on what the next transaction is. It goes on to the common knowledge. So that's it. Uh, Bitcoin has three big ideas. The, use, uh, the idea that uh, if transactions are common knowledge, then money is common knowledge. The use of random leaders to maintain the common knowledge and the use of a computationally intensive task to pick random leaders. I hope you found that informative.